Welcome to another parent teacher video lesson from the earlygiftedmanual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. And if everything is going really well and, and your child is having no trouble comprehending this idea of patterns and sequencing and they can do some fairly complex uh, sequences and recognize some, uh, some uh, dif difficult patterns, you can take it even one step further. And uh, you can create some visual patterns and see if they can extend those. First of all, see if they can identify them and then, and then extend them. So uh, I think the first ones we're going to do, I mean, we could use craft sticks or, uh, or toothpicks, but since uh, this is a video, I'm going to use the bigger of the two. And I'm just going to make this up as I go along here. So there's the beginning of... As you can see, you can even you know make design patterns where it's not just one. Th uh, how how should I how should I word this? The pattern is in the design. It's not just a sequence of of singular objects. And of course, this one is pretty easy, isn't it? It's three horizontal uh, craft sticks, three vertical, three horizontal, three vertical. And of course, we could get a lot fancier than this. We could work with triangles, you know, something like that, and uh, keep going like with this kind of, uh, but uh, you get the idea. So in other words, you're taking it one step further into these more complex uh, visual patterns. Let me show you another example. Perhaps you might want to use uh, um, some coins. I'm going to dump them out here to make it easier for them to use. Let's see, what could I do with these? Let's see. And then I'm going to use... Just making it up as I'm going along here, folks. <laughs> So that's one leg. Yeah, and this is a very interesting pattern. Three quarters in a line like that, two pennies, three, three dimes in a vertical line, two pennies horizontal, three quarters again. So we're repeating right here. That's where the pattern ends. Three quarters, two pennies, three dimes, two pennies. So I think, uh, I'm sure you're kind of getting the idea on this. So let me push these out of the way and perhaps we'll do one more because I love working with these when it comes to making interesting visual patterns. And that's with just working with uh, these magnetic letters. So let's see, what could I come up with here? Okay. Yeah. As you can see, I'm taking the, these letters and turning them into a very abstract uh, code, if you will. But nevertheless, uh, it's a great exercise for your for your child to you know 
recognize these patterns and even, you know, uh, learn a little design in the process. So, there's an interesting one, eh? <laughs> who, who would have ever thought letters could look like that? So, how do you describe these? The two W's, two X's, two D's, two W's, two X's, two D's. So, once again, if your child is really doing well with patterning and sequencing, try, try some more of these uh, more challenging visual patterns with him or her. And you could teach your child to make a pattern necklace. And what you will need for that activity is a, is a good set of, uh, of beads. And uh, of course, beads, uh, beads and bead sets come in all shapes and sizes. I like this particular uh, set I have here because it has uh, uh, a good choice of uh, shapes, sizes, and colors, and they and the beads seem to be just about the right size for for small hands. So, uh, of course, you can use uh, you and your child can use any any set you like. And you will also need um, a shoelace or a string. But what you're seeing here, and I hope you can see this because it's very thin, it's, it's, it's uh, about 24, 26 gauge copper wire. There it is. And the reason I like to use this is uh, obviously because it's strong. It's easy to bend. See if I can show you that. It's easy to bend, so and that makes things much easier. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. And it always has a nice sharp point. But uh, I realize that everybody doesn't have this stuff <laughs> hanging around in their house. So uh, you could use a shoelace, uh, any, any uh, kind of lace or string. But it's very important that uh, it be the right diameter. It, it can't be too tight a fit for your beads, or it can have a frayed end, or that will really frustrate your child. So pay attention to that. All right, so let's get started here. Uh, the first thing you have to do is uh, start out with, uh, I don't know what I'd call this, the, the first bead. It's kind of like a bead that you can attach to your uh, shoelace or whatever that um, establishes the, the chain here. So as you can see, I'm gonna loop it around, twist this around a few times, and this is where the uh, uh, copper wire is great because uh, if you had a string, you'd be having to tie this I, I'll, uh, in a couple knots or whatever, but um, with this here, all I had to do is just uh, loop it around a few times. So you go through the bead around and, and loop it around. So that's the start of, uh, of, your, of the, your child's necklace. And uh, of course, as I always say, you should give uh, him or her as much help as they need with this, especially if it's their first time. But they'll catch on very quick and, and soon enough they won't need any help at all. So we're making a pattern, right? So uh, let me see, I'm gonna think of a pattern I could make here. We start out with this black one. Let's put another black one on. And let's see, what could I choose next? How about a large green one here? And how about another one of those? All right, and now let's see, what could I do next? Maybe this. Here comes a red one. And another red one. So I've decided this is my pattern here. Uh, two blacks, two greens, two reds, and of course, since it's a pattern necklace, you would repeat the pattern. So black, black, green, green, red, red, and on and on uh, till you get to uh, all the way to the end here. And you leave a little bit because obviously you're gonna have to tie it together. So uh, don't forget to do that. Uh, 
Um, so let's pick it up here and let me show you how to tie it. Remember the starter, starter bead here? Well, here we come back with the other end now and through it goes. And now you do the same thing. You fold it over and if you're lucky enough to have uh, this copper wire, you just twist it. Otherwise, you have to tie it into a knot. So, of course, uh, normally this whole thing would be filled. I didn't want to spend the, the whole lesson doing that, but you get the idea. And then your child can take it, and uh, like I'm doing now, and put it right over their head. And they have this wonderful pattern necklace that uh, they can wear for the day. You know, for as long as they want, and then when they get tired of it, they can uh, take it off, uh, take all the beads back off, uh, undo the knots, untwist the wire, take the beads off, and do an entirely different one. So, uh, pattern necklace, a great way for your child to practice uh, uh, pattern recognition, pattern making, and uh, just to have a, a good time. Kids really love this activity. Uh, you know, sometimes we think kids can't do anything for very long. Kids can sit down and work on these for long periods of time. I can tell you that from my experience with uh, kindergarten and even preschool kids. So that's, uh, that's how you can teach your child how to make a pattern necklace.